Adam Jarrett from Counting Crows, I'm very, very stoked to speak to you, um, especially since you've gifted us with the best thing to come out of lockdown at all. Um, this new album, new singles. But um, before we get into that, how was how was the lockdown for you? Are you good? Did you bake banana bread? Did you drink and get fat? Like, what were you doing? Well, I I, uh, I cooked an enormous amount. I, I about a month into lockdown, I told my girlfriend, I'm really worried I'll wake up a year from now and I won't have done anything. So I'm going to learn to cook everything. And I've always been a cook, but I really, I cooked like every night for the next year and a half. I learned to cook Chinese food, Thai food. I, I was already good at Italian food, but I, I can really do it now. I, I just, that's all I did. I cooked. And then I started putting a cooking show up on Instagram uh, <laughs> for people teaching them how to cook all this different crap. Uh, so that's mostly what I did. I mean, I got lucky because we had I had written all this stuff before and we were 85% done with the record when the lockdown hit. So we were, we were almost finished. And so we had to postpone for a few months, but we were able to do the rest of it uh, remotely and kind of, and then like in, that was in the beginning of March when we stopped because of the lockdown. And then uh, my producer and engineer drove to New York so they wouldn't have to fly from Chicago. And we all stayed at my house. I cooked for everyone, so no one was allowed to go out. And we mixed and mastered the record a couple blocks from my house so we could just walk to work. Okay. So we finished it in July. So for me, creatively, it was okay because I had just gotten this huge project finished, you know? Yeah. So I was I was okay, you know? And I have, you know, I'm not single anymore, so I wasn't on my own. This would have been brutal to be on my own all this time, I think. You know, so my girlfriend and I just kind of like, had some quality time we watched movies we read i cooked literally everything in the world <laughs> um, yeah i mean it was rather unbelievable that way i i was trying to learn to, to cook thai food better because uh immer our guitar player and i you know we were in our early bands we uh there was this restaurant we used to go to and i love thai food but nothing else quite it doesn't taste like this one restaurant and it's long gone now it closed so I really wanted to learn to cook stuff, but also learn to cook it well enough so I could make it taste like this one restaurant. And when Immer came over for dinner one night, because he only lives a few blocks away, and he said, wow, it just tastes like memories. It tastes wow. like childhood. This curry, because specifically the green curry I made blew his mind. Like that was I'm the, almost my proudest moment of all the cooking because <laughs> I recreated this dish from this restaurant we used to love. And it was hard. I had, it took wow. me a lot of uh, attempts to figure out how to do it, but uh that's what I did. I mostly cooked. No banana bread. Uh, good. No, me neither. We didn't do that either, but I also didn't cook. I just drank all the wine in the whole world. All of it. Every <laughs> single drop of any, any kind, any color, any any grade, it was mine. <laughs> you know, me, me and a couple of friends, we, we own a winery uh, out in Napa. Two of my best friends and I, we own this winery uh, and we, uh, it was weird. We were really worried we were going to go under during the the lockdown but instead what happened was that everyone in the world started drinking yep. in huge amounts so like the all of a sudden this little thing we bought did so well um the only problem was that i wasn't drinking at all during the lockdown i just don't i only drink you know i like to drink to celebrate and to have dinner with people but i don't drink at home alone ever so i i hadn't been drinking and we had a whole new vintage come out and so i had to do all these like wine tastings on zoom with my winemaker who's <laughs> wow. crazy who's wow. a fantastic huge crazy man and i you know he would send me cases of wine and i would have like nine bottles and i would have to go through these tastings on zoom with all of us and so i hadn't been drinking in months and suddenly i'm getting completely hammered on zoom <laughs> because I'm tasting wine from and it's all he's so good so i'm really enjoying it and i don't think about when i'm drinking i never think about how much i'm drinking i'm just it's so good that I lost my mind. I got so wasted on these. It happened three times on these wine tastings that I just, <laughs> it just buried me on, you know, internationally on Zoom. I'm just like, oh, this is delicious. <laughs> I love this. It's tragic. Oh, it's very problematic that you've just described a Friday night for me in lockdown, though, which is. <laughs> but anyway, um, oh, so you see, I thought that this album was born of lockdown. Now that you're telling me that it wasn't, it makes even more sense for me. Um, so last year was just a really great pause for you, which must have been well, well needed, well deserved. 
Well, I mean, it was scary too. I, mean, I live in New York and especially because, you know, we were really caught by surprise at the beginning yeah. of it. And, you know, they had freezer trucks lined up in the streets outside the hospitals. It was, I had a few friends pass away right at the beginning. And, you know, it was pretty terrifying early on because it's, you know, that's, it's one of the bigger cities in the world and it's very international. Yeah. And so before anyone knew what was happening, the entire city was infected. You know, there wasn't much you could do about it. And so we were all really careful, but at first it was, you know, it was pretty scary at first, but then after a while you settle into just being careful. And yeah, I mean, I, I had a nice year in a lot of ways with my girlfriend. We just spent time together. Uh, so, I mean, it would have been a lot worse if I hadn't, having just kind of finished this record made me, I wasn't going crazy. It was really nice to have just completed something so creative and such a difficult project right before. So. Before we get into the, the, the writing and recording and, and the album, um, how, how, what does the future look like? How are we navigating touring and shows and connecting with fans post pandemic or mid now again, a new strain of a pandemic? How, how do you navigate this? Well, I mean, I was really worried about it. If, uh, and very concerned because plans started coming as early as like last year for touring last fall. And I was like, there's no way, forget yeah. it. I'm not even, you're, you're all wrong. Yeah. Uh, and then as soon as this year came around, it would, people were talking about it in the summertime and I said, no way. And then I, I actually called up a bunch of people in public health, like the, the head, the president of Vassar university, cause she's a public health uh, scholar from Harvard. I talked to the head of public health at Harvard and at Boston university. I wanted to talk to some scientists about it to see whether it was feasible. And what I got back is that they thought it was reasonable to start touring again at the end of summer and the fall in America, uh, that outdoor shows were much better than indoor shows. So I took a tour that had, I think it had 24 indoor shows and eight outdoor shows and switched it to, I think it's now 27 outdoor shows and five indoor shows. Uh, and I, and they're in cities I feel that are safe to do it in like New York now where people are very careful. Um, so I, I feel a lot better about it in America, the rest of the world, we're just waiting to hear, you know, we've, we've called everyone, the promoters in all the different countries, you know, South America, Central America, you know, Australasia set, we called our promoter in South Africa about a month ago too, all over Europe to talk about 2022, because I, I would like to spend the entire year touring internationally if we could. Yeah. Um, but it's a little hesitant still in those places. I think it'll be okay in America, but you know, England's looking pretty safe now, but the Not hopefully yet. the continent, it's all about like the vaccine getting out though. Cause if people can get vaccinated, then it's pretty safe. You know, it's just a matter of waiting for that to happen. I, I was told that we can't really go to South Africa before next fall. Maybe that's what we were told, you know, I, I heard 2041 is when we're going to be done. 2041. I mean, we're just kind of waiting for the countries to tell us, you know, yeah. we, we were, we're ready to go. It's just, you know, you want to, it's not, I'm not even worried about us because we're all vaccinated and we'll be backstage. It's more about like, when do you think it's okay to encourage audiences to gather together? Yeah. You know, and I don't think it's, it's really ready anywhere else in the world, except for the States right now. And maybe England, which is mm -hmm. getting there, but you know, we're just kind of waiting. You just want to be safe. I think we'll all know when it's okay. You know, everyone will know at the same time, probably. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, we'll be the last. So while we wait, um, we, we can at least stream it. We can, we can watch it on YouTube. We can, we can get involved with butter miracle. Sweet one. Tell me about this album. Um, uh, butter is a miracle. I'm not sure if I would have named something after it though. Well, it, it's a little bit surreal. Um, you know, I, I got over here in August of 2019. I came actually to the same farm I'm on right now in the West of England. Uh, and the first thing I did was shave my head. The first day I landed, my sister, my, uh, my uh, sister called me from home and I ended up talking to her for a little while when I first got here and my girlfriend had gone to sleep because she was so jet lagged and my friends were at work and I shaved my head. I got off the phone with my sister and I was trying to stay awake. I washed my face and then I shaved my head. <laughs> and uh, it was on a whim. I just thought, it, but it was about time. And then I came out to the farm and uh, I don't know, I was here for a little while and I, I started wanting to play piano again. And I hadn't really played much in the last few years. Um, and then I wrote this song, The Tall Grass, a couple of days later. And 
the next day I was playing it back, just trying to see if it was really finished. And I was messing around with the ending, thinking about making it a longer song, change some of the chords under the I don't know why's. And then I sang this line, Bobby was a kid from around the town. Bobby was a kid from around the town. Kicks pumped up and head held down. And I, I thought, oh, that's great. And I got another line. I thought, okay, this is gonna be a longer song like Palisades Park. It's gonna have all these movements. Yeah. But after a little while, I realized, no, no, this is actually a different song. This is, which it ends up being Elevator Boots, you know? And, uh, but I loved the way that it just flowed right out of the tall grass. All, so much so that I thought it was the same song, you know? And then I thought, what if I write a series of songs where the end of one is the beginning of the next? And they're all like a suite, you know, where they're totally different songs, but they flow like one long song. I thought well, that could be really, really cool. And that got me really excited. And at that point, like, I don't have any breaks on me. Once I get started about writing and excited about it, I want to write a whole record. I want to record, I want to put it out. And so that's what we did, you know? I have to tell you, listening to it through, um, and TikTok told me that one must listen to an album through from beginning to end, because that is the way that the artist intended it for it to be listened to. So I did with this. And it was like binging a really good TV series. That's exactly what happened in my head. It makes sense when you listen to it like that. And I feel like now I'm going to have to go and re-listen to everything I love. But um this the an elevator boots especially um it is the first single it is the one that we we are about to play and i this is my favorite one from it and i've listened to it more than once but because of something that you 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 say in in the release um how you can become so obsessed with something that it leaves you out of tune with the rest of the world and i thought that that was so beautiful it's such a great analogy for things for like anything you do um but how that sometimes you do kind of have to come back um, because this is, there is a real world, an analog world now that we don't really spend much time in. So I just, I, I wanted to maybe ask you about like the writing of that and, and, and what that was for you. Well, I think it's, it's true. You know, the thing in my life that has been the center of my whole life is music. You know, from the, when I was a kid, it was my obsession and I love it. And I have all these memories soundtracked by it. And then weirdly enough, as I got a little older, I started to make it myself, you know, so music's played such a huge central role in my life. And I think a couple of the songs on the record sort of deal with that. You know, Bobby and the Rat Kings looks at it from a perspective of a fan of this fictional band for whom all of his memories are soundtracked by their music. And then Elevator Boots is like from the perspective of someone who's making music. And it's about how, you know, it does leave him a little out of tune with the world, but that's actually kind of okay because part of the reason he's out of tune is that his life is like that. You know, that people are very temporary when you're touring and and places are very temporary. They fade in, they fade out. You know, you, you come and you go. The one thing that's really solid and that's always there is the music. Yeah. There's always a gig the next night. There's always this place where he's able to, relate to himself you know he can hear himself and see himself in this music and it, it keeps him glued I and mean, yes it does leave him a little out of tune with the rest of the world but the truth is he was going to be a little out of tune anyways and at least he always has the music you know which is the same thing as it's been for me i think i've always been a little out of tune with everybody else but the music is how i connect with myself and oddly enough it's been the way i've connected with everybody else too i I completely, I love, I love this album so much that I, I, it's, it's in my car. It's playing over and over and over again. But like speaking to that, how are you going to, you, you're settled now, right? You have a girlfriend, you have a life, you have this farm. You're going to start touring again. How do you balance that now? Oh, well, I mean, I, I mean, I've been on tour before. I haven't, we've, I haven't put out a record during our relationship, but I've been on tour during our relationship okay. because we were touring all the way up through 2019. Um, I, I was just finishing up a tour when I came over here and shaved my head. I mean, I had literally just been at gigs. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we're used to that. It, it's been a little while. I mean, and we have had such amount of time together that it will be very strange to go away. Yeah. Um, but that's something everybody has to deal with when they're in a band. You know, you, you just, you try not to go too long without seeing each other. I'm sure she'll come out whenever she can. Um, so, you know, we'll make it work. It's a, 
it's weird you know it is weird to leave home when you when you have somebody but you know some of the guys in my band have kids you know and they've managed the kids have managed to grow up with their dads being on tour yeah um so i mean you, you can find a way to make this stuff work it's just it's just effort you know and like they all take effort anyways so 2021 you are planning some shows you're getting back into it new album new single um anything else that you're busy with well i'm writing another suite right now that's what i'm trying <laughs> i'm over here i'm actually on the farm right now and i i was up late last night working on it and the sun rises here at like 4 30 in the morning so uh i woke up really early because the their dog woke me up it's just me and my girlfriend here my friends are, are up in london and uh but they let they leave their dog with us because i i love this dog so much so i got up early and walked him around the farm for a m couple miles and then i came home and i got to work started writing some more um so i've been working on these songs i haven't finished any of them yet but the music is great I haven't finished the lyrics, but the music for all, I have three pieces so far and they're really good musically. I, I really love them. Um, so I'm just trying to finish the, the lyrics and then I'll see about how they work as a suite, you know? You know what? I feel like you musicians need to really stop trying. Like you need, you make us feel like we need to try harder. You've just released an album. You're busy with another one. You're cooking amazing food. Like I need to find something. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's because you spend all these years as a musician. It's so hard. Like I was 27. The first time a record company guy came to even see a band I was in. I was 28 when we got signed and 29 when our first record came out and I turned 30 during the first tour. So I had like 10 years in the clubs of being a bum, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> basically being an unemployable bum. I mean, I had jobs, but I washed dishes. I did construction. I worked in a video store. So like when you get a job and it actually works, it's just like, it's such a weird thing to have a job in the arts where I can actually work at it all the time and I can support myself. So I, you know, I, I went from being a complete bum to being a, a workaholic. I get really terrified about not working because I spent a lot of years early on. They're still scarring me those years. <laughs> I spent, you know, washing dishes and, uh, and, you know, being an architect, I was a landscaper. I, construction dishes i worked in a video store yeah those are basically the jobs Adam, thank i'm so you happy to have my job thank you for telling us that i think a lot of us put so much pressure on ourselves when it hasn't happened by 2019 it can happen at 30 and it that that's the time that's the right time yeah i mean i just was like this is who i am i'm just gonna keep doing it it was kind of scary because it's not like i mean i knew i was a songwriter when i wrote my first song at 18 i just didn't know how the hell that was going to work and it took 10, 12 years to really work out, but I didn't know what else to do. I, I, I this is what I, I mean, I am essentially unemployable other than this. <laughs> I don't see a lot of great job prospects for me other than this one. So thank you. I'm trying to keep as long as okay. I can. Like food truck, Thai restaurants. I don't know. Like Italian food. I'm, I see. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a chef. There's a good way to fail in life. Like that, <laughs> that's a risky business. <laughs> So speaking of food, you can stream Butter Miracle Sweet One. It was released on the 21st of May. First single on Jack Rand FM, Elevated Boots. Um, Adam, thank you for your time. This was incredible. And it was so lovely to speak to you. Thank you, Danny. And, and go to our Instagram and check it out. You can learn to cook all kinds of crap. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm in. I'm not going to cook. I'm just going to watch you cook. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for thank your time. Thank you, Danny. Jacaranda FM.